college football under the radar picks against the spread for week number four thus far on the season. I am 19 and 17 against the spread on these games. Now, I will go ahead and preface this with letting you know my best bets, my official plays, the ones that I am betting, I give out on the BetUS College Football Show over on BetUS TV. There's a link in the description. You can go back and watch the Tuesday and Wednesday shows there. On these, I just like to give a breakdown in which way I would lean on them, right? I'm not putting money on these games specifically. If I do, it's it definitely ain't a full unit, right? I ain't putting hundreds on any of these. But, uh, but I might put some pizza money on something along these lines if I feel really, really strongly about it. But I will let you know. One way or the other about these. So, uh, last week went five and seven again. I started nine and three in week one, went five and seven in week two, five and seven in week three. So, let's see what we got here. Let's start it off. Number one here. This is going to be a long show. Da, da, da. Baylor at Iowa State. Now, let's go on and pull up the spreadsheet. These are the current numbers. These are this year's numbers. There are no priors in this. This is my formula and my numbers on this. So, if you see something different uh, anywhere else, that's what's up. Uh, now, I do have a couple of different sets of formulas that I run through. This is the main one with just the stats, right? Just stats. Uh, you look at this game. Iowa State is a two-and-a-half-point favorite latest line at BetUS. The total sits at 45-and-a-half. It's 12 p.m. Eastern time game on ESPN2. Uh, Baylor is 19-7 and seven against the spread. In their last 26 against winning teams, Iowa State, after a straight-up win, they are 3-7 and seven against the spread in their last 10. Uh, you look at Matt Campbell, he is not normally good in these kind of situations. Um, I mean, it's it's bad. 5-12 and 12 against the spread. Chris Felica from Game Day actually put this out. Uh, but he said that uh, in games where the spread is between, you know, minus 2.5 and, and plus 2.5, Matt Campbell is 5-12 and 12 against the number. He has not been good in these spots. Now, if you just look at the numbers, there's not really a mismatch that you can point to here. Um, I I don't see, you know, other than, I, I know this, Iowa State not good at running the football. Uh, Baylor really good at stopping it. Um, as far as passing offense goes, Iowa State, I mean, not great. We're looking at number 40 um, in PPA per pass, and Baylor sitting at number 38 on defense. Uh Iowa State's not explosive throwing the football. They're not explosive running the football. Um, field position, like Baylor, seems to be doing better against that. Uh, Iowa State, better on defense. But, again, when you play Iowa and then, uh, you know, a couple of G5 FCS teams, obviously the numbers are going to look good there. Now, this is very much uh, weighted. It's it's opponent-adjusted, Right. So strength of schedule here at number 92. The ESPN strength of record metric is is strange because it's got Iowa State at number 17, and I think that's because of the win at Iowa. Uh, but I think that they value Iowa a little more than I do. So regardless, um, you look at this, you know, at number 66 strength of schedule, uh, Baylor's got a loss at BYU in overtime where they missed a couple of field goals. If a special teams comes into play here, yeah, Baylor could maybe see some issues. But... When I look at all these stats, um, I I'm going to ride with Baylor to cover here plus the two and a half. I need to see it from Iowa State in a close game, it, even at home. Like I just need to see it. So I'm going to ride with Baylor to cover the two and a half. Uh, that metric about Matt Campbell or that that stat five and twelve against the spread in games you know between two and a half and two and a half. Yikes! I don't like that one. I don't like that at all. All right, moving along. Missouri at Auburn. Auburn is a seven-point favorite. The total sits at 51.5 over at BetUS. It's 12 p.m. Eastern time, and it is on ESPN. Uh, TJ Finley is out for this game. Uh, let's move along to <laughs> the next. There we go. The next one. Um, and TJ Finley out for this one. Missouri 9-25 and 25 in their last 34 road games uh, against the number. Auburn is 6-1 and one against the spread coming off of a double-digit home loss uh, in their last seven in that position. It doesn't happen often, but when they do, obviously, uh, <laughs> yeah, you get the point. Uh, there's all this negative attention around Brian Harson. Obviously, the quarterback is out for this game, etc. 
I, I do wonder if this team is not better without TJ Finley on the field to make mistakes. And I know that that sounds harsh. I get that. But when I look at this, uh, I think that there are ways that it, that Auburn can win this game. Now, my spread on it's Auburn 8.76. I think Auburn can cover this spread. I think Auburn can cover seven. Uh, I think they have the best running back on the field in this game. Uh, you look at the PPA per rush on defense for Missouri, number 65. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think that Auburn can take advantage of that. Big time. When you look at the offense for Missouri, I think Auburn has ways that they can stop what Missouri's doing. Um, I, I just I believe that Auburn will find a way to win this game. I don't expect them to win a ton of games this year, but I, I think Auburn can cover this game. So I will take Harson and them to rally the troops and get a big one here. Uh, Auburn covering seven. I think Robbie Ashford probably can play quarterback for them. Um, you might see some Calzada. I mean, who knows? But I, I do think Auburn ends up getting the cover on this one. Maryland at Michigan. Tricky game. Tricky game here. Michigan, a 17-point home favorite latest line at BetUS. Total sits at 64.5. It's a 12 p.m. Eastern time game on Fox. Looking at the trends, of course, Maryland 17-37 and 37 against the spread in 54 games against winning teams. It has been brutal air forever. They beat up on bad teams, and they lose big against good teams. Michigan 8-3 and three against the spread in their last 11 home games. And on top of that, Michigan has covered six straight against Maryland. They always, always seem to find a way to, uh, to get a cover in this spot. You look at these, uh, you look at the matchup here, look at the numbers. I don't believe that the market has caught up to exactly how good Michigan is with J.J. McCarthy in the lineup. Uh, the offense, J.J. McCarthy has led the offense to scores on 13 out of 14 drives that he has been the starting quarterback, or that he has been the quarterback, right? And I think 12 of those were touchdowns. Only one was a field goal. Like, only one did they not score on. Now, I understand that the strength of schedule is uh, lacking, right? Definitely lacking. When you look at this, uh, their strength of schedule is 131. Maryland's is 105. So it's not like Maryland's exactly been going up against, uh, you know, beasts every single week. They they had an impressive win over SMU last week. I will tell you one thing. SMU is not Michigan. And, of course, Maryland has to go on the road here. So Michigan getting to play an actual, real-life, breathing opponent, I think there's going to be a lot of fire here. I think they're going to be fired up for this game. I think Michigan is going to smoke these dudes. Now, my number is 26.59. That is well over the 17 here. Um, at, now, the total, I mean, 64 and a half. Uh, my total on it is 75. Uh, I, I don't know that I would trust these totals numbers because this is just based on stats for this year. Um, but I look at it, and I just think Michigan is significantly more talented than Maryland. I don't think Maryland's defense is going to be able to stop them. I do think Michigan's defense will be able to slow down uh, Talia Tagovailoa. I, I understand that they've got a great wide receiver core, but when you pressure Talia a little bit, it, sometimes he gets a little a little iffy with the football. We'll just say that. He, he has been known to throw it to the wrong team. If he does that here, they will get demolished. So I expect Michigan to win this big, big, big. So, yes, uh, give me Michigan to cover the 17 on that. Minnesota heads to East Lansing. And Michigan State is a home dog of three points here. Total sits at 51. It's 3.30 p.m. Eastern time on the Big Ten Network. That's the latest line over at BetUS, of course. Looking at this, uh, Minnesota has not been favored over. i got to switch these things over, I swear. Uh, i got to fix my button. Minnesota has not been favored over Michigan State since 2006. Now, they've played a lot. Eight times in that span. Minnesota is 7-1 and one against the spread in their last eight against Michigan State. How insane is that? Good gracious. So, uh, now obviously, these numbers are based on just this season. There's no priors. There's no whatever. It is opponent-adjusted, but even still, 
Minnesota's numbers have been absolutely, I mean, just they have been barbaric in the way that they have just smoked some of these teams that they have played. Now they got to go on the road and they've got to try and do it against Michigan State, who is, of course, coming off of that loss to Washington last week on the road in Seattle. And you look at some of these numbers, obviously they're not going to mesh up quite the same. Strength of schedule is number 41 for Michigan State, number 130 for Minnesota. I look at this, I mean, Minnesota has been so efficient running the football, uh, and they continue to do that, and, of course, stopping the run. Uh, you look at their defense. They're number three in PPA per pass defense. So, Peyton Thorne, you ain't got a whole lot that you can look forward to this week either, bud. Uh, PPA per rush, number 19 for Minnesota's defense against number 53 for Michigan, or excuse me, Michigan State. Uh, Michigan State, last week, they were taken out of the game. Their running game was taken out of the game because they got down so quick. I don't expect Minnesota to just rush out to three straight touchdowns the way that Washington did, but it's a possibility, even without Chris Altman-Bell in the lineup, which he's out for the year now, and that obviously uh, hurts Minnesota's offense. But what Soraka has been doing thus far has been pretty awesome. If you look at Minnesota's offensive numbers, you scroll all the way down here, number eight PPA per pass, they're only throwing the ball 32.65% of the time. Uh, so that's number 127 in the country as far as pass rate. Uh, rush rate, 66.67% there. Uh, PPA per rush, they're number four in the country. Now, Michigan State, their defense can stop the rush, but they've only they've only faced a run 44% of the time. That's going to be interesting. I'm, I'm very interested to see this game. Very interested. I think Minnesota is a really, really good team. And I think Michigan State has some problems. I just, I don't trust this team for whatever reason. So I'm I'm going to roll with Minnesota to cover. The, I'm going to trust the numbers here, uh, but I'll take Minnesota to cover this one on the road, even in East Lansing. Give me the Gophers. Give me the Gophers. Notre Dame heads to Chapel Hill to face off against North Carolina. That line currently is North Carolina favored by one and a half at home. It's the total of 55 and a half latest numbers at BetUS. This was 3.30 p.m. Eastern time on ABC. It's a prime time spot right there in the middle of the afternoon. Uh, Notre Dame 7 and 3 against the spread. Their last 10 against ACC opposition. They're 2 and 0 oh against the spread against North Carolina in the last two seasons. Here's my question. Uh, can Notre Dame Stop Drake May. I don't know that I believe it. I don't think that they can. Uh, they'll slow him down more than other teams have, obviously. Uh, again, my numbers on this, just way screwy. I've got North Carolina favored by almost 17 points. I don't think that that's entirely accurate. But when you look at the numbers from this year, like, yeah, uh, strength of schedule is number 80 for North Carolina. And it's number five for Notre Dame. Notre Dame has played Cal. They have played Ohio State. And uh, they have played Marshall. And, yeah, obviously it took a little bit of hit last week against Marshall. But, regardless, um, the roster strength is not that far off from each other. I've got a total of 50 on this. Uh, the actual total at BetUS is 55 and a half right now. I, I don't think that Notre Dame can score enough to keep up with North Carolina. That's what I'm looking at here. Uh, when you look at the offense, number 119 PPA per pass, number 98 PPA per rush, and I understand that North Carolina's defense is really, really bad. Do not get me wrong. Um, you look at standard downs PPA, uh, you look at third down attempts per game, all that, like Notre Dame does not have a lot of third down attempts per game, but that's because they don't have a lot of drives per game. Like They're, they're not great in standard downs. They're not great in passing downs. Um, this is just really difficult to find a path to victory for Notre Dame in this one. Uh, turnovers would help. North Carolina hadn't exactly shown the propensity to turn the football over. I am going to lean North Carolina on this uh, to cover minus one and a half at home. It, yes, Notre Dame, everywhere they go, it is going to be a big game. This is a tricky one. So I will I will ride with the Tar Heels here uh, Mac Brown surprising everybody again. Give me, give me North Carolina to cover one and a half. Moving right along, we got six more games, and I'm already over an hour. 
I appreciate you guys for watching. Like the video for me if you are watching right now, of course. And jump into the chat. Obviously, we love to see all your different picks, etc. I want to know what you guys think about these games. Uh, but yes, Texas at Texas Tech. Whew. 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time on ESPN. Texas, a seven-point road favorite. Total of 60, of course, latest lines over at BetUS. Uh, Texas is 7-3 and three against the spread their last 10 against Texas Tech. Quinn Ewers is traveling and will suit up in this game, according to Steve Sarkeesian. Interesting. Heard that he was out for like six to eight weeks. He's been out for like two. What is going on here? Um, I look at this number, and uh, what did we say the total was? 60 on this. My total on it's 55.82. Um, Texas Tech... You know, I've got a score of uh, 34 and a half to 21 and a quarter. So 13.27, around about 13 points on this. Uh, the line, you know, over at BetUS is actually seven. I think I'm going to ride with Texas. I think, especially if Quinn Ewers does show up at this game, I don't care if he gets in the game or not. Uh, if he is out there on the sideline, there's something about that where a guy comes back early to be with his teammates, et cetera. Like it kind of rejuvenates. The guys, it rejuvenates the team. Um, and Texas, I mean, like I said, they're 7-3 and three against the spread in their last 10 against Texas Tech. Even when they were bad, they found ways to cover against Texas Tech. Um, in Texas Tech, you, you want to see interesting things here. Even with Zach Kitley, they're number 104 in PPA per pass, and yet they're throwing the ball 63% of the time. What? Like, why are we doing this? Uh, at the same token, number 16 in PPA per rush. And yet they're only running the ball 37% of the time. That's number 118 in the country. Unless they flip that thing around, I do not see it ending. E even if they do turn it around, uh, I mean, Texas's weakness is obviously against the pass. I mean, they're number 60 PPA per pass on this. Uh, as far as Texas's offense, like, no, they're not great against the run. Or they're not great running the ball. How's that? Even with B. John Robinson, uh, the numbers have not exactly been great. The number 86 in success right here. Uh, but PPA per rush for Texas Tech, I mean, number 18, uh, number 15 in rushing explosiveness, et cetera. Like, I think these numbers are obviously going to change because, again, you look at strength of schedule, number 13 for Texas, number 50 for Texas Tech. I think Texas has enough to be able to uh, win this game by more than a touchdown. I know it's a tricky spot after the UTSA game, et cetera, but I do think Texas is going to be focused here. Texas Tech coming back home after getting just drubbed. I say drubbed. It wasn't awful, but you're going to be beat up when you play NC State, bottom line. So I do think uh, that Texas is going to be able to cover that seven uh, on the road in Lubbock. That's that's going to be an interesting, interesting spot. So let's let's uh, let's see what happens there. But I'll ride with the Longhorns on that. Indiana is headed to Cincinnati. And Cincinnati is a 16.5 point favorite over at BetUS. The total sits at 57.5. It's a 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time game, of course. And they just stacked all these games at the same time, right in the middle of the afternoon, of course. But uh, but that one's on ESPN2. Let's go on and pull up the stats here. Um, you look at the trend, Cincy 5-1 and one against the spread their last six at home. Indiana is 2-8 and eight against the spread in their last 10 against winning teams. Indiana is so interesting. They are 3-0. and oh. They've not looked great, certainly. Uh, and when you look at this, I mean, they're number 102 strength of schedule, but number 19 strength of record. Again, it's something, something's off. Something's weird about this ESPN number. But regardless, uh, we don't use that anyway, so... I, I just have it for context. Uh, I've got a score of Cincinnati 27 to 16. Now, the total over at BetUS is 57.5. My total is 43.82. But these are just raw numbers, no priors, etc. So, obviously, proceed with caution if you're going to use my numbers on this. Uh, but this is just raw stats from this season. So, pay attention. Uh, you look at this, Indiana is not great at anything. However, uh, Cincinnati is number 81 in PPA per pass, right? Indiana has not been great at that. Number 82 PPA per pass on offense. But when you look at the pass rate, etc., 
I think that there are ways that Indiana can exploit Cincinnati's defense. Remember, this game last year was 38-24. to uh, Cincinnati got the win, and they didn't look great doing it. Uh, I want to say they were down, or they were nearly down at the half, and Indiana's linebacker went out for a targeting or whatever. It was a weird spot, uh, but since he was expected to win that game by more last year, uh, this this one stat here, pass explosiveness. Um, Indiana's number 18 in that metric, and Cincinnati is number 103. Indiana does like to throw the deep ball, especially with DJ Matthews. Um, Basil Act Matthews, I think it's been a lot of fun. This is an interesting game to me because I feel like people have been crapping on Indiana all week long, talking about how bad Cincinnati was going to beat them, etc. I still expect Cincinnati to win the game because I don't think Indiana is is great, obviously. I know they're 3-0. But I do think that Indiana can keep this game relatively close. I think you hit a couple of big plays, et cetera, uh, that defense can find a way to do something, I I would imagine. Um, But Fickle's bunch, like, they're good. They ain't great either. So let's let's see what ends up happening here. Um, Yeah, I think I'm going to ride Indiana to cover the 16-and-a-half here. Uh, I just think that they're better than people are giving them credit for. And no, I mean, the numbers don't necessarily spell that out for you. But I, I do think maybe we're undervaluing Indiana just a, just a touch, just a smidge. So Indiana to cover 16.5 on the road at Cincy. Moving along, we've got a few more here. Oregon at Washington State. <laughs> I think you guys understand how much I enjoy the Palouse and all the games that happen there. Jake Dickert has done a fantastic job there. Uh, Washington State is a seven-point underdog at home, total of 57.5 over at BetUS. It's 4 p.m. Eastern time on Fox on this one. Uh, Oregon, 2-0 against the spread against Washington State in the last two years. That's great, right, obviously, but you've got a new coach there. you got a new coach at Washington State, etc. Um, if you just take it over, over 10 years, that's the only two times that Oregon has covered against Washington State in the last 10 meetings between these teams. Just unbelievable. Um, Bo Nix. I talked about this on Three Dog Thursday on BetUS TV. Bo Nix has 30 touchdowns and two interceptions at home. Just lights out when he plays at home. When he goes on the road, 16 touchdowns, 16 interceptions. Road and neutral. Uh, Jake Dickert's defense. The scheme is really interesting. I think they they have some hybrid guys. They change it up routinely. Uh, my number on this, I mean, this is effectively a pick em. Like and, and again, this is raw stats, so it's based on you got to toss in the Oregon numbers against Georgia as well, and, but you also got to toss in Washington State's numbers when they went to Wisconsin. I think Washington State's a pretty good football team. Like I, I understand Oregon looked great against BYU last week. I get it. But this one... Very, very interesting to me because I could see ways that, you know, uh, you can pass the football on Oregon. I see ways that you can maybe run the football on Oregon. Um, I don't think their defense is that great. I think BYU was coming off of an absolute just war with Baylor. And when you look at, you know, the defense against the offense... Washington State's defense has been pretty good. Like, just look at the... You see all the green on the left side of your screen here? That's Washington State's defense. I think... And here's the other thing. Washington State loves to slow this thing down. Uh, 84 plays per game. I mean, they run clock. They keep it easy. I look at this, and I could see a way that Washington State wins the game, so I am certainly going to take them plus seven here. Um... There's no real mismatch or anything. I believe that Washington State can keep it within seven. So I'm going to ride with the Cougars here for sure. Next on the docket here, Marshall heads to Troy. I talked about this a little bit in the preview. But 7 p.m. Eastern time on NFL Network, Troy is a a three-and-a-half point home dog. Total of 51-and-a-half. Marshall, four-and-one against the spread in their last five on the road. Troy is 1-5 and five against the spread in their last six at home. 
Now, obviously, this goes. Uh, Charles Huff has already been there, but John Sumrall not exactly had a lot of home games here. So let's see what happens. Let's see what goes on. Uh, Troy is returning several guys that did not play against App State last week. I think they will be uh, very useful this week. I will certainly say that. Now, uh, my numbers on this, and these are, of course, the raw numbers, etc. My numbers on this have Marshall covering the game, winning by eight points. Uh, they're a three and a half point favorite. I'm going to go against my number on this. Um, I think Troy's defense is really, really good. You look at that strength of schedule, number 19 for Troy, number 55 for Marshall. Uh, yes, a win over Notre Dame is pretty cool. I don't know that I could say that Troy wouldn't have been able to go and beat Notre Dame two Saturdays ago. Just saying. I think that Troy and their defense are incredibly, incredibly talented. And I think Sumrall has some schemes that can really give Marshall some fits. You look at Marshall's numbers, number two in PPA per pass. They are number 58 in PPA per rush. And I look at this, and I, I think, uh, excuse me, number two in PPA per pass defense, uh, number 58 per rush defense. I think Gunnar Watson is doing some pretty interesting things. Like, I think he has been way more effective than we want to give him credit for. And I, I think Troy will find a way to put up some points here. But the biggest thing is, I think they are going to be able to stymie that offense for Marshall. Uh, I think the defense is better than what the numbers you're seeing are because obviously they've played App State and they've played uh, uh, Ole Miss already on the year. So, yeah, Troy, it's kind of difficult. This is kind of a must-win spot for both of these teams. Marshall coming off of a loss against Bowling Green. Um, I Yeah, I understand. They beat Notre Dame. I get it. And Troy played App State close. But Marshall got beat by Bowling Green. Uh, I think I'm going to ride with Troy on this. This feels like a last-second win for either one of these teams. I think Troy can win the game. I will certainly take them as the underdog here. So give me Troy to cover three and a half. Southern Miss at Tulane. This is an interesting one, if for no other reason than, of course, the Southern Miss head coach, Will Hall, was the offensive coordinator for Tulane when they really got that thing rolling under Willie Fritz. Now, Willie Fritz is, of course, still at Tulane, still doing Willie Ball. Tulane is a 13-point favorite, total of 48.5 over at BetUS. It's on ESPN Plus, 7 p.m. Eastern time. These are two teams that are trending in the right direction. Southern Miss, 6-0 and against the spread in their last six games. Uh, Tulane, 5-0 and against the spread in their last five games. Uh, this is a tricky, tricky handicap. Uh, Southern Miss is, is starting the freshman quarterback, Zach Wilkes. Uh, but he's going to play Ty Keys some. Now, I don't know exactly what that means necessarily. But you look at what Southern Miss has been able to do thus far. They have been this close in so many different games. Uh, they played Miami really, really tough in the first half. And then, of course, just depth finally wore out, and Miami ran away with that thing. Uh, they blasted uh, Northwestern Louisiana State or whoever, Northwestern State, I guess, last week. Um, this offense, if you allow them to get going, they will find a way to put up points uh, so long as all their quarterbacks don't get injured, right? I, I have to wonder about this spot. Now, the number is right on what it should be. I, I told you they're favored by 13 over at BetUS. My number has Tulane favored by 13. Uh, the total is 48.5. Well, my total is 47.5. I think, I'm very interested in this. I think the spot is really difficult because Tulane is coming off of their first P5 win under Willie Fritz. They went to Kansas State and got the W 17-10 to last week. Now you're coming back. You're a double-digit home favorite. Your, your head coach is going up against a... Former coordinator that did good things at the school, but you know, still doesn't have it built yet at Southern Miss. You know, da 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 da. It's very tricky to me. I I have to wonder. I I think Southern Miss could find a way to win this game. I think they can keep it within thirteen. I think Will Hall. Obviously, these two coaching staffs know each other, but I think Will Hall is going to have some things up his sleeves here with Frank Gore Jr. etc. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to call an outright upset, but I will call Southern Miss plus 13 at Tulane. Uh, I know Tulane won this game last year handily, but different teams. I like Michael Pratt. 
I like what he's doing. I think Southern Miss finds a way to keep this thing pretty close. I think they got a shot at the end to win the game. So I will take Southern Miss plus the 13 on that one. Next on the board, we got two more games here. Iowa heads to Rutgers. Yes, it is the Sickos game of the week. Good gracious. The total is at 34, and Rutgers is a seven and a half point home dog here over at BetUS. Of course, uh, the numbers, of course, provided by BetUS. 7 p.m. Eastern time on FS1. Uh, these two teams have only played twice, and Iowa is 0 and 1 when they play in New Jersey. Now, that was 2016, so it's a little bit different now. Um, you look at this, Rutgers' uh, top two quarterbacks are probably going to be out for this game, more than likely. Uh, I told you the total sits at 34. Well, let's go on and, and pop it up here. My projected total is 34.8. This is based on the raw numbers just from this year, and I've actually got the wrong team favored. I've got Rutgers favored by five. I do not trust these numbers, obviously. But... Iowa has broken every metric that you could possibly come up with because it, you have to find a way to toss in special team scores and defensive scores and turnovers and short fields and blah, blah. And I don't know of a way that you can accurately predict that. I just have no idea. Uh, I will tell you this. Uh, the Rutgers offense was not great anyway. They run the ball a lot, 61% of the time. But I believe that without their top two quarterbacks to even have any kind of a hint or any kind of a threat of a pass, I, it doesn't matter what these numbers say on the screen. I think I was going to cover the 7.5, and, and I think they're going to do it by playing defense and special team scores and a short field and et cetera, et cetera. They're going to find a way to get a fumble or something. I'm going to trust that Iowa is able to cover 7.5. Uh, I would not throw any money on this game because, oh, my God, this is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Look at how good Rutgers' uh, defensive numbers are, by the way. You see all the all the blue on this left side? Excuse me, not blue. All the green on that left side? And then how bad Iowa's offensive numbers are? Yeah, it's, it's bad juju. But then it's, it's basically the same up here for Iowa's defense. These are two good defensive teams. Um, you look at PPA per play, Iowa's number 9, Rutgers number 31. PPA defense per drive, Iowa's number 10. Over here, and Rutgers is number 32. Like, these offenses are not going to be able to move the football. Yeah, seven and a half feels like too much, but also Rutgers without quarterbacks, uh, that's not good. That's not good. I am very curious to watch this game, though, because I want to see what Sean Gleason does, the uh, Rutgers offense coordinator. I want to see how he tries to attack this. We'll see. All right, finally, last game on the docket. We've got Utah at Arizona State. Oh, my. 10.30 p.m. Eastern Time. It's going to be a late one on ESPN, of course. Uh, This is the game that ESPN chose instead of picking USC and Oregon State. Or Arizona State is a 16-point home dog, total of 54 over at BetUS. Uh, Arizona State 5-0 against the spread at home against teams with a winning record. And Utah is 7-3 against the spread against teams with a losing record in their last 10. Just in this individual matchup, though, Utah is 6-2 and two against Arizona State. 6-2 and two against the spread against Arizona State. So, why don't we go on and bring up the numbers here. I've got Utah favored by 12.45. That does not mean that I'm going to take Utah in this game. Obviously, Arizona State uh, fired Herm Edwards. I, I don't know about the running backs coach that took over as the interim. And I look at these numbers, and Arizona State, yes, they had to play Oklahoma State. Utah went and played at Florida. Strength of schedule actually favors Arizona State as of right now. Um, But, man, (laughs) which says something when Eastern Michigan appears to be a better opponent than San Diego State, right? That's something. Um, But you look at this, you know, PPA margin certainly favors Utah. Uh, Look at the offensive success rate. For Arizona State, number 127. Uh, this is going to be a tricky spot for Arizona State. you got to be able to keep these guys engaged. I don't know how well they can do that because I think that Utah will be able to score early and often. That's my read on this. I think that they score a lot in this game. Um, but 
then again, I mean, you never know. Uh, you, you see penalties per game here, 27. Uh, and number 27, excuse me, for Utah, only five penalties per game. Uh, Arizona State, almost to 10 penalties per game. The number 116 in the country. The, this one could get out of hand because I don't know how invested in the program the Arizona State players are. You got a whole slew of transfers. Do they do they still fight and play for this running backs coach that's the new interim? Do they play for those guys? Or do they just kind of pack it in and uh, we'll figure out what we do next year? I'm I'm curious. I'm gonna side with Utah on this. Uh, because I think even if Arizona State were to try, I think that Utah is as good as uh, Oklahoma State, and Oklahoma State won by 17. I mean, Utah favored by 16? I'll take it. I'm going to go against my number on this. I uh, I will take this one. I will roll Utah to cover 16 on that. All right. A uh, quick recap of what we went through. Baylor plus 2.5. Auburn to cover 7. Michigan to cover 17. Minnesota minus 3. North Carolina minus one and a half, Texas minus seven, Indiana plus sixteen and a half, Washington State plus seven, Troy plus three and a half, Southern Miss plus thirteen, Iowa minus seven and a half, and Utah minus sixteen. Those, of course, brought to you by BetUS. It's America's premier online sports book. They are where the game begins. And make sure that you go and check out the picks contest because BetUS brings you that as well. It's over at winningcureseverything.com. Head over to the contest section there. So, good times this weekend. I think we're going to have some really, really fun games. It's, I mean, it's been awesome the first three weeks of the season. Four, if you count week zero. Uh, but I think we're going to have some really interesting stuff go on this weekend. Because we we typically do in September. We're, we're still trying to figure out these teams. So, uh, with that said, go and check out the BetUS College Football Show. It's over at BetUS TV. Of course, you can click the link in the description. If you want to sign up over at BetUS, there's a link in the description for that as well. We try and make it as easy as humanly possible for you guys. Uh, if you like the show, share it out with a friend. Tell somebody. Make sure that you like the video, of course. And why not subscribe to the channel? Help us out a little bit. That would certainly help things along. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. And make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE. And the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.